I see weekly live forex market analysis. I see it based on our results today. Audience has a quite um, wide range of experience. So I'll try to adjust today's webinar accordingly. So please uh, bear that in mind. All right, before we start, we'll quickly go through the risk disclaimer. Uh, trading foreign exchange on margins carries a high level of risk. It may not be suitable to everyone. So before deciding to trade Forex, you should consider your investment objectives, experience, and risk appetite. Uh, there's a possibility that you may sustain some of or all of your, uh, or lose all of your account, and therefore you should not invest the money you cannot afford to lose. This part is the most important. And um, you should carefully, um, you should seek advice from independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So with that, today's host uh, will be Jakub Brahimov, but unfortunately Jakub won't be able to make, if he will, he will only join uh, for the um, second part of the webinar. So therefore, just to save uh, everyone's time, I'll sk uh, quickly skip through that. And today I'll be your main host. My name is Edmund Aspolavichus. I'm a senior financial analyst at ATZ Forex and also head of ATZ Financial Tools. I'm a social entrepreneur, uh, started my own business, and also I've been training, uh, have been trading and training and um, working with multiple professional brokers, uh, trainers, and traders. So last week uh, we had ECB meeting. Uh, really nothing uh, major happened. The bank kept rates unchanged. Um, overall, everything is um, more or less the same as it was uh, during the last uh, meet ECB meeting. However, the only major difference is that the bank acknowledges the, um, that the downside risks to the outlook are, that are diminishing. So that's a positive for the euro. Meanwhile, we finished the week with U.S. Uh, first quarter GDP reading. Uh, which surprised and came lower than expected. This was negative for the dollar. However, the, um, the reason for the slowdown, slowdown in the growth can be primarily um, contributed to personal consumption as well as seasonal changes. So, and actually, if you took into comparison um, um, first quarter readings of last year or previous years, um, then you would be surprised that actually uh, this, um, well, 2017's first quarter reading is um, zero point, approximately 0.3% higher than the average um, growth reading of GDP. So if we would look the bigger uh, to the bigger picture, it wasn't that bad as markets took it. So if looking for uh, to fundamental developments this week, we should be aware of a uh, FOMC meeting on Wednesday. Basically, the bank, uh, well, it's not a central bank, but it's it acts as a central bank, um, will be looking into its rate decision. Overall, market consensus is for the reading, uh, for rates to be unchanged. Uh, and from so therefore we should uh, look into the statement and um, Janet Yellen's question and answer session. And for the statement, we could expect um, the committee to acknowledge the lower GDP rating, but look at the overall economy as um, as following the projections quite uh, well uh, from a bigger picture. And we'll finish uh, the week with NFP readings. Um, so on January and February, both uh, NFP posted quite a large reading of 200,000 jobs, uh, job additions per month. This is indeed really a large number, taking comparison that um, the unemployment is at, well, near all-time lows, well, considered uh, near relative to the all-time lows. Therefore, um, on March, however, we had a slowdown. Again, this could be contributed to, to um, the seasonal changes. Therefore, uh, the overall consensus uh, for Friday's NFP is approximately uh, 190,000, which is, as I mentioned, a lot given the, 
low on uh, low unemployment. Though I think if we would even have above a hundred one, well, if we would have above hundred and seventy thousand, that would be already considered as a good reading for the um, for the U.S. economy, even if it would come below the consensus reading. And lastly, on Sunday we ha we'll have the second round of um, French elections, really from three uh, previous previous French elections, I did not expect uh, the euro to act uh, as it did. Uh, euro appreciated, even if, uh, even though the Le Pen, which is, uh, she's, um, well, represents far right of, um, for French, of French people, basically, which would imply that we might be, well, the risk of Brexit would increase. So even with that euro appreciated, so, Hence the saying, trade what you see, not you what you think. So again, we might look for opportunities uh, to trade on Euro Japanese Yen as it was the biggest mover since um, from last French elections. I mean, the first part of French elections. So now that we have covered fundamentals, let's move to uh, the second part and um, look at the technical analysis for gold, Euro USD, GBP USD, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and Australian dollar, US dollar. So let us switch to our um, trade.com MT4. So starting with gold, um, as always, top to bottom analysis from uh, weekly time frame, um, down to time, daily time frame and sometimes hourly time frame. So what we can see from indicators perspective is that overall trend for so far remains bullish. Uh, we have bars forming, uh, um, having an upward slope and forming higher above the neutral zero level. However, from a um, stochastic oscillator perspective, we might have a confirmation of a um, top which would imply a bearish correction. So the uh, so that's from the weekly time frame, and overall we kind of see this overall development of um, of um, bullish trend with bearish corrections, and we might have something happening the same as it was uh, previous times. Now, from daily time frame, uh, it well daily time frame a bit contradicts the weekly time frame. Um, the MACD, I would say, is overall bullish, as as it is on weekly time frame. However, at the moment, we might have a, beer, a bearish correction. Yet, our oscillator would indicate that the bear, uh, bearish correction has almost finished, meaning that the correction from the Fibonacci 100% up to let's see what level this is up to 1276 has now finished yet this is exactly well but from weekly time frame we might see that this correction is just starting therefore since we have a contradicting um, contradicting indications I would really expect uh, the gold to trade and consolidation for the, this week, at least at least until we have some kind of fundamental uh, push for gold that might come from the either the FOMC or NFP. But up until that, um, I would not trade gold on a swing or basis, probably just on our time frame for intraday opportunities. Um, those opportunities might come from a following levels, uh, such as um, Fibonacci 38.2%, uh, 50 and 61.8. So that would be 1,262, possibly uh, 1,269, and um, 1,275. However, what I would look as the best risk reward opportunity would be to look to long gold from well just below Fibonacci 23.6 to 
at approximately 1,253. So basically, uh, although it's a bit early to call, but I would look for that level and uh, look for, well when the price would reach that level, look for a confirmation of a bottom. And if I would see that during this week, uh, only then basically I would look to long, uh, long gold back again. Since um, overall trend remains remains um, bullish, just now to see when the bearish correction will end. Moving on to Euro USD, um, really the pair remains the trend. Well, the overall trend remains uh, bearish, uh, as can seen from the bigger time frame. But at the moment, the pair is, well, I would say trapped in a quite um, wide consolidation range. Though we, though current developments, we could uh, see them as uh, just a bullish correction and an overall uh, bearish trend. And from indicators perspective, this is, well, indicators do confirm uh, this uh, view. We have us uh, weekly MACD bars forming towards the neutral zero level and as such basically implying that the trend is bearish but we have a bullish correction quite a prolonged one perhaps and um, however our oscillator keeps forming uh, bars uh, keeps forming lower lows and lower highs implying that this is indeed just just a correction Another thing that I've noticed is that we are um, getting closer to a zero, a neutral zero level. And whenever, from well, from experience, whenever MACD um, approaches the neutral zero level, we have a quite, uh, we have, we often have um, either a sharp uh, increase in price or sharp uh, correction. Therefore. I would well I would look for a beer, uh, bearish opportunities for euro so looking into that from daily time frame we might see that um, well we have a really nice formation of the uh, higher highs and lower lows and at the moment we might see another um, another top therefore well, as confirmed by our week, uh, daily, oscill uh, daily oscillator, basically uh, the indicator has breached below the 80 level. And as such, from Fibon looking for targets from Fibonacci perspective, um, we might aim for Fibonacci 76.4 at 1.07, since the current developments do seem like a, like a nice top. And uh, if you can, if you were uh, with me during the last webinars, we were longing Euro USD from from 88 to to 50 as our first target, and our se my second target would have been uh, 38.2. So that was nice, well, 300 pips there. So the, uh, since this does seem like a top, uh, we might uh, might look for a look for a bearish opportunities towards 76.4 we should take though our first target as 61.8 at 1.08 uh, from there we might uh, might have a slight correction and the price should continue lower and if we have a breach above our recent highs at zero at 1.094 uh, then we should look for the same opportunity from Fibonacci 38.2 at 1.1 1 .1. this is well this is strong Fibonacci level uh, this is also a psychological level and this is um, and this is indeed where the weekly 
you know, 100 SMA um, is, which also often acts as a strong dynamic uh, support resistance level. So therefore, from the risk reward perspective, this would be ideal, ideal level to look to short euro. All right, so let's move to GBP USD. From weekly time frame, um, we have, well, overall we have a strong uh, bearish trend, but at the moment we have a bullish correction, similar as we do with Euro USD. And um, last week and previous week we were longing GBP USD. Now I well I still see some further bullish uh, bullish expectations. I still expect the price to increase uh, further. However, at this point, um, it does seem that the trend is well the bullish correction is nearing its end. Therefore, jumping into the well longing um, long GBP USD from now wouldn't be so attractive as it was last or previous week. And similar developments are from daily time frame. Uh, the daily oscillators are uh, already above the 80 level, uh, which indicates that the price uh, is overbought. Our, MA, uh, our MACD is, uh, is forming new highs. And therefore, well, I still do expect for, uh, further further uh, bullish price action. However, I would look. Um, I'm. I wouldn't be so sure, given the fundamentals, the fundamental developments that are happening now at the UK. So, we could possibly look um, I, for nearby support resistance levels and for look for opportunities uh, from those. So our nearby support, well, nearby major support is at Fibonacci 136, uh, 123.6% at 1.28. Our second support would be at 1.275. While our two major resistances from which I would expect um, some correction on our time frame. You should look for a possible um, for a for a possible MACD divergence or double tops um, or from RSI perspective, if we have an oversold market on our time frame for a possible correction from either a psychological 1.30 level or 1.31 which are Fibonacci 150 and 161.8%. Moving on to Australian dollar, US dollar. From weekly time frame, the pair rem really rem for me it is similar to you what we what we see in Euro USD. Uh, Australian dollar as there remains in a broad consolidation range and at the moment is falling well correcting from um, from the top uh, top of the range which is at 0. Point, well we can take 0. 0.777 or 0. 0.775 as the top of the range so that's what we have at the moment and indicators do confirm that our MACD remains to fluctuate um, around a neutral point and now it's uh, forming bars uh, towards it while our um, weekly oscillator is sloping towards the downside. Yet what we can see from uh, more from the weekly time frame that the pair uh, has fallen in between the 20 and 100 moving averages, and I also refer to I often refer to this as an MA sandwich. And what that, that tells us is that we should well we shouldn't be surprised by erratic price movement. From daily time frame, uh, we have a strong. Uh, strong uh, bearish uh, momentum 
RMACD nicely forms bars below the signal line as well as our um, stochastic is approaching the 20 level. Therefore, I'm still convinced that we'll see some uh, that we'll see uh, bearish continuation for Australian dollar US dollar. The pair was shy about approximately 15 pips uh, from our target, uh, which we were selling from approximately approximately 0 0.70 um, 0 0.759 if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we're, our targets should still be reached. Um, or well, the final target should still be reached. Uh, therefore, we might look to re-enter Australian dollar from either Fibonacci 88% at 0 0.752 or at 76.4 at 0 0.755. And uh, at the moment, we might see a, core, um, a bullish move towards it since uh, the I believe this was Thursday's candle. Uh, Thursday's candle seems it is a sign of a bottom, a well, of a near um, temporary bottom, and Friday's candle seems just barely to confirm it. And uh, if we have a, basically a bottom from at Fibonacci one, a custom Fibonacci 110 percent, we might well. It's a sure case that we might see a correction and therefore hence my expectations that we should better look for bearish opportunities from 88 and 76.4 and we should aim for well subsequent Fibonacci levels as our take profits and uh, our final take profit should be at one at 123.6. You, you could, should take stop loss approximately uh, 50 pips. That's for uh, for most really cases when whenever you trade on daily time frame. Well, that should be at least 50 pips. And overall, the best would be aiming for one to uh, one to one and one to two risk reward ratio. Moving on to to our last pair, Australia, uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Uh, let's see what we can see from the weekly time frame. So from the price action perspective, the pair remains, we have a bearish continuation. We had a, well, the overall uh, bearish trend formed back from 2014. Then we had the bullish con uh, correction. And this seems as a bearish continuation. Our uh, weekly moving averages nicely confirm that it was both sloping towards the downside and um, the price breaking just below the MA sandwich while well, breaking out of the MA sandwich uh, last week. From daily time frame, our targets were nice at, at our targets at 100% since the previous two weeks have been well exceeded. But uh, nonetheless, that um, we entered. Well, we ha haven't. We even re-entered the market once again last week. So that was 150 pips. So we shouldn't ask more from the market that it's ready to give us. That's actually a, a big lesson that I learned before. Uh, before when I started off, I was really going for perfect. Uh, let's say perfect. Um, perfect opportunities so if i would be longing from this point i would be well i would be upset let's say which might sound funny if i would only get um well if i would only long it to up to this point and market would still move a higher approximate 50 percent more but lesson uh, the lesson i learned don't uh, expect more from the market that is all that it's ready to give you and Last week, we should be happy uh, with our profit of 150 pips. So with that said, um, similar case to GBP USD, the, I would still probably expect some uh, bearish continuation. 
so given that the market seems to, the moment well, the bearish momentum seems still strong however jumping in at this point uh, wouldn't be um, favorable therefore what we could look this would well this would be looking ahead of time so once again actually trade what you see not what you expect but looking uh, looking looking further ahead we might look for opportunities at 123.6 percent at 0 0.78 um, if we see a bottom there though it's uh, given the strong strong decline here like we did here the bottom might take almost full week so something like uh, what happened here and the, the bottom might, might actually be at 150 uh, and 110% so not over um, not talking too much on New Zealand dollar US dollar really just I would look for a bottom before entering um, entering the pair and if we if we have a break of 110 percent and 133.6 we would then actually look for 138.2 but we'll get back on this pair on uh, our next analysis so there there uh, there you go that's our weekly analysis um, today's webinar was sponsored by trade.com uh, you can see more um, um, you, you can find out more about this uh, broker from a to z forex directory it's just um, really one of few a to z approved brokers and it is now time for a question and answer session so you may ask any questions or ask for any pairs to so I could uh, look for and uh, if I haven't even if I haven't already covered them.